I started at 19 years old as an ASM um, on the 28th of September at 8 o'clock in the morning. Witnessed the prosecution, the show. Um, turned up at 7.30 as a good little boy um, and realised the set was being unloaded and uh, my introduction to the theatre started from there. And then I left here in 2014 as technical manager and went off to the Beck Theatre in Hayes. So I would do lighting, sound, stage management, flying, uh, building of scenery, um, making sure that the actual building was looked after and maintained. Um, the backstage area, uh, my first close down, I, had, I was on my hands and knees painting the walls because that's what we did. I was scrubbing the stage floor. Um, I was doing what was needed to do, do to make sure that the theatre ran, not just doing shows, because it's not just about the shows, making sure the building worked. 1970 it was built. It was built in the heady days of the 70s, so there was a lot of input into there. I think Stevenage Borough Council, the, the Stevenage as a whole, have made it tick because if there wasn't the support from Stevenage Borough Council, if there wasn't the support of Stevenage Leisure Limited, then the building would have closed. We wouldn't have had the investment. I mean, I've, I was, I've been privileged to have a lot of money given to me to invest in the infrastructure that none of the audience would see, none of the uh, people coming to see the venue, even the people on stage coming to see, would have known that it, ha it was going to happen. Um, it doesn't, it cost a lot of money as I mentioned about upgrading the lighting. It had cost a lot of money to upgrade the sound. It was, well, it's, it was all analog. It was all very basic. Um, so let's take the lighting. So lighting, um, we started off with 132 circuits, dimmer circuits. So that's each individual circuit, 132 lights could be operated from there. I think when I left, we had over 250 now um, because we've just progressed and added systems to there. Um, Stage-wise, uh, we've still stayed the same though because we can't. The technology and that side of things has moved has moved rapidly, but the investment needed to actually update to the um, to the electronic controls is so vast that actually it's not um, efficient or feasible for us to change it to that. Um, so we still do the manual ropes, we still do the manual flying, we still do. Uh, or that it's still done manually because that's the cost effective way of doing it because you would have to rip the whole building apart to make it happen. So there's a lot of equipment that the Gordon Craig Theatre that Stevenage Leisure Limited have put have bought for us that gives the actors, the actresses, the guys on stage, the, the bands that come in here and then the audience members that wow factor when they walk in. The Christie Theatre organ was installed around about 85. It was used quite predominantly up until, again, the, the 19, um, 1997 to 1998, when unfortunately it fell out of favour, um, just because um, people weren't interested in seeing it. It's an amazing piece of equipment. It's all analogue. Um, for many a year, we had the ability of showing a film and having pre-filmed pre organ recitals. Um, and so used to play the people would come in, play the organ in front of the film screen at the at a particular point, we'd press the button and the pit would lower down and the organ would um, disappear and we would then show the film and people would just turn up to hear the organ. Um, it's got bird whistles, it's got klaxons, it's got the um, drum snares, it's got thunder noises because it was, as it says, a theatre organ. So. We did one day or one season where we got a load of black and white films in, put the organ on stage and they played along and they did the da -da 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 and all that sort of stuff to the black and white films, which is exactly what it was designed for. It is still here. It is still um, sitting in the back and it is still on the in the auditorium. But as I said, it's all it's it's fallen out of favour and it would be a shame to see it disappear. For a long, long time, the Gordon Craig Theatre was the longest running pantomime in the world because in the mid 90s, right the way through to probably um, the um, early, early 2000s, pantomime wasn't done outside of the UK. So all the big venues were shutting. And as I said, it went into the beginning, into the middle of February or went into February. So when I was told, oh, our pantomime runs for eight weeks, you're going to do 120 shows. 120 shows I was like what and on a Saturday it was the dreaded three show day 
So it's a two, five and an eight, two o'clock, five o'clock, eight o'clock. Um, you didn't stop. You went through the whole show. I was like, uh, as a, I was like, whoa, I don't know. But um, that was my first show. So I was involved in that. I was on the side of the stage. I was setting the props up um, and noticed there was something flashing on the side of the stage. I was like, we don't. in that day and age, flashing lights were the only thing. It was the disco effect for the light. So I was like, we don't have a disco effect happening there. I was like, yes. So I'm going, what's going on? Looked over and there's a 16 foot book flat. So five metre high book flat, which is a flat, flat that looks like a book that is part of the scenery wobbling. So as the young 19 year old as I was, I went running over there, tried to grab hold of it, couldn't grab hold of it properly. The momentum pulled me onto stage. I ended up on stage in front of 500 people in the pantomime. A hilarious laughter from the audience. The stage crew on stage was, um, or was the crew on, sorry, not the crew, the cast on stage sort of were like, you're not supposed to be on here, are you, Nigel? No, I'm not. Please, could you give me a hand getting up? Anyway, it was all, it wasn't supposed to be. I, I, you can tell I was embarrassed that it happened in the, in the long run. But in the end, we have an award ceremony and I won an award for it. And that will always stick with me. That was my first, that was welcome to the Gordon Craig Theatre, Nigel. There have been hundreds of people, walk, thousands of people walk through these doors for, and, and everyone is, that's their show. That's their thing. It doesn't matter whether, whether it's, like I said, there is the, the big stars, the Barbara Windsors, the Paul, um, uh, Paul Laidlaw. I mean, he's a fantastic dame, absolutely fantastic. Loved working with him. Again, another little story. Um, opening first couple of shows of the pantomime we do in dress rehearsals. So he's the dame, and he's sta but he's standing there in his jeans and T-shirt. And I'm going, but everybody's in dress rehearsal mode. We're all dressed up. We're all in our blacks. We're all ready to go. He's not in his dress. He's not in his dress. He's not in any of the outfits. It's like, it's not very good, is it? So I just went over to him and said, Paul, can you tell me why you're not dressed like this? It's a dress rehearsal, isn't it? He went, Nigel, if I've got all my makeup on, if I've got all my slap on, if I've got all my dresses on and everything like that, and I need to tell somebody off, for instance, they're not doing it very well. They're not going to take it in. They're not going to, they're not going to take it seriously, are they? So, you know, he was, he was, he was doing what he needed to do. Obviously, as soon as he gets into his dame outfit, He's off and he's had some fun. I mean, running off stage to chase us, us boys around just because of the fun we're making. We're having a laugh with him on the side of the stage. Um, all those little things have happened with us. So everybody will remember a few years ago when unfortunately we had the small fire in the, in the reception area down in sports. Well, my heart sank when I got that phone call to say, could you come in to give us a hand? Because it's my building. It was my building. She was my building. She was looked after by me. I looked after her. I made sure that you as the public that come into there, um, it was warm. It was light. It was there and it was clean and tidy and everybody was having the same. So when somebody phones you up and says, oh, we've got, unfortunately, yeah, we've got a bit of an issue here. The building's on fire. It's a bit of a big, it's a, it's a horrible thing to hear. And you get in your car and you get to the venue as quickly as possible. Luckily, because of the way it went, we were it was fine. But it was it was part and parcel of the venue. I think the whole the whole venue has my heart because um, nor I, I honestly say this, I was privileged to I was privileged in the fact that every four years, as I've explained, every four years I moved on in the ladder and was able to go right. My next task, technician. What do I have to learn to be a technician? What do I have to learn as a chief technician? Oh, technical manager. Right now I have to learn all about the theatre and then buildings and technical manager. I have to learn about the venue and the building and the nooks and crannies. So the whole venue has that. Um, I, and and that's, what I, that's what I have and that's my heart. It, it, and it was a big part of my life.